Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Dr. Wright Breaks It Down for You. I'm here with my dad, Dr. Wright, as always. Hi, Dad. Hi, Jessica. My dad, as you all may know, is an inventor, and one of his products, the Windstorm Safety Whistle, he's got a new idea that he wants to produce them in glow-in-the-dark plastic for Halloween, you know, so kids can have them around their wrists as a safety precaution. Because thinking of all those little kids all scurrying around the streets, don't want anyone to get lost. So, Dad, you were showing me one of these whistles the other day, and it glows in the dark, and I just got really curious as to how things glow in the dark. How does that happen? It seems kind of dangerous, like it's maybe emitting, I don't know, bad things, not to be all paranoid. So how do glow-in-the-dark things glow? It is mysterious. It's almost magical. Glow-in-the-dark stuff is everywhere. Jessica, when you were a little kid, your mom and I put glow-in-the-dark stars on the ceiling of your bedroom so when you went to sleep at night, turn the lights off, there'd be these stars and constellations on your ceiling. Right. They have frisbees. They, of course, my whistles. It's really quite cool. So the question is, how do they work? Right. Like most science, it all goes back to the atom. That's the smallest part of any matter. And specifically, the electron. All substances, no matter what they are or what they're made of, are composed of atoms. Now, atoms are incredibly tiny, little specks of matter that have a center little nucleus surrounded by spinning electrons. Now, the electrons are even smaller than the nucleus, and they speed around the nucleus like runners speeding around a high school track. Right. These electrons, however, are unlike the runners in that these electrons spin around and they stay in their own lane or orbit. So you have all these electrons spinning in these little orbits, the little lanes. The electrons right. don't fall into the nucleus, and they don't fall out. They stay in their own lane. Now, this orbit is called the ground state. Now, this is really important because while the electron wants to stay in its own grand orbit, you can force it out of its lane, and that's where the light comes from. But you've got to hit it hard enough to loosen the electron. You've got to smack it really hard. How would you be able to loosen the electron? That sounds kind of dangerous. Is that like how nuclear stuff is done? No, no, no. Because the nucleus is where the nuclear stuff takes place. Oh. We're talking about on the outside where the electrons are. Let me tell you, there's three ways to get an electron to leave its orbit and spin out. You can heat it up, you can electrify them, or you can shine light on them. So how hot does it have to be in order to shake an electron off of something? Pretty darn hot. Take a piece of metal and you put it in a fire and you wait. You pull the metal out of the fire and it's glowing. There's actually light coming out of the piece of metal. Where that light came from is this. When you put a piece of metal in a hot fire... The metal glows red because the electrons are energized to the point where they jump out of that orbit and they spin out a little bit. And like a baseball, you hit into the air. Once it goes way up, it's going to come back down. And when it comes back down, it makes a thunk in the ground. But see, when electrons go out because you energize them with heat, they fall back. But they don't make a thunk sound. They give off photons of light. They actually give off light when they fall back to their ground state. So if you heat up a piece of metal really hot, it'll be white hot. And that's because the electrons are going really far out, and then they fall back. And instead of going boom, they give off light, and it's really, really cool. Like Anytime. light bulb, right? Exactly. Very good. Exactly like a light bulb. Because with a light bulb, it's a little bit different. Instead of heating it up necessarily, you're putting electrons inside there. Now, that's the second way you can do it. You can put a lot of electrons inside the piece of metal. The electrons jump out. They fall back, and when they fall back, they give off light. It's the falling back to the ground state that enables an atom to actually emit light. It's very, very cool. Right. Now, you mentioned earlier you can shine light on electrons and they can release, but that's not with heat. It's just with light, even cold light, like fluorescent light. That's right. I'm sitting at my desk and my shirt is blue. The reason why I can see that is because the light that's hitting, even in my little basement here, the light that's hitting my shirt is causing the electrons to bounce up and bounce back and give off blue light. Now, some materials have atoms that don't hold on to their electrons very good at all. And when light, even light from a light bulb or the sun, hits that, the electrons jump way out from the nucleus. Now, these super excited electrons that fly way far out, it may take them 20 minutes to get back to their ground state. So this little atom is going to give off light for 20 minutes. It's like taking a baseball and throwing it way up a flight of stairs. It's going to go bonk, a bonk, a bonk, a bonk, a bonk down the stairs. If you get the right chemical and you shine a light on it, 
the electrons are going to get jacked up really high, and then it's going to take them a long time to slowly give off the light. That sounds kind of, maybe I'm just a worry war, but that sounds kind of dangerous, almost. Well, energy in typically equals the energy out. So the energy that excites these electrons is just coming from the lamp in the room. Oh, okay. okay. This is not a nuclear reaction. It's kind of like pushing in on a spring and then letting it go. So, okay, they charge up the glow-in-the-dark windstorm whistle. You said it only lasts like maybe 20 minutes. Is there any way to slow down that process? You can both slow it down or you can speed it up. And the best way to speed it up is if you were to add a little heat to it. Because what that does is it makes everything go to completion quicker. Oh. Or you could take that glow-in-the-dark whistle and put it in your freezer and it'll actually last longer, and it will glow longer there. And that's true with chem lights, uh, those glow sticks. That's also mm. true with things that are delicate. Like we used to keep photographic film in the refrigerator because the chemicals went slower. So wait, so glow sticks, the light from that, is also the electrons falling? Yes. Um, glow sticks, lightning bounce, bar, you think? fire, all those things involve electrons falling to a lower state. And like I have my pen here, I drop that, and it fell to a lower energy state and give off sound. But whenever electrons do it, they don't give off sound. They give off light. Wow. And it's really kind of cool. That's awesome. All right, well, thanks so much, Dad, for looking all that up. Yeah, I'm excited to see the glow storm in action this Halloween. That will be the- Yeah, we're going we're to have some fun with that. It's gonna awesome. Be Great. All right, well, thanks, everyone. Tune in next week. We'll have some other delightful scientific topic to chat about. And I guess that's it. All right, thanks so much, Dad. Thanks, Jess. Have a nice day. All right, you too.